accompany to the ring by Big T and the banker Mark Lloyd from Havana, Cuba. This is Cuban Heat. Well, that 23 match unbeaten run, as I said, in no small part to the entourage that Cuban Heat has built. First, he added his financier, the banker Mark Lloyd, and now this enormous man, somewhere approaching seven foot tall, Big T. I, I'd peg him, he hasn't given me his height, he didn't say much to me, but I'd peg him at about six foot ten, probably six foot eleven, but hovering around the seven foot mark. find out who the opponent is but generally speaking Mr Heat likes to have a few words first fans not really wanting uh, to hear what Cuban Heat has to say. I've only got one. Why doesn't this ever happen with politicians? That's what I would have done. He's been there, done it, and got the T-shirt. 
And Cuban Heat has had no time to prepare for this. And I've got to say, there's a very good chance. A very good chance indeed. But the 10,000 peso bounty could be heading to Harlow tonight. So when the bell rings, the watch, the clock, the stopwatch, whatever you want to call it, that will begin as well. Johnny Storm has 10 minutes to survive. He doesn't have to beat Cuban Heat. If he can beat him, of course, then so much the better. who the crowd favourite is, and I think pretty much anyone could have come out and been a favourite above Cuban Heat. And there is the 10,000 pesos inside that case. It's a new briefcase, you might notice. The old one finally fell apart on Saturday after being used as a weapon so many times. He denies ever using it as a weapon, but we have video evidence. And here we go, the clock is running. Johnny Storm has 10 minutes. Oh, and Pig T hits the wrong man. Eliminates one of the uh, threats, although the big man is still here, of course. Oh, ho, ho. and there you see it's the mark of experience. Storm recognizing the threat and is taking out the uh, the peripheral threats, shall we call them? to leave things one-on-one -on -one with Cuban Heat for the moment. Let's see how well he does there. Going for a pinfall early. And another pinfall. Big T is back to his feet. Boot to the face. And well... Johnny Storm is doing exactly what he needs to do. Go for quick, fast pins. Try and win this match as often as possible. And looking at Cuban Heat's face, he really doesn't like the situation he finds himself in. Distractions are in place again, and a shoulder block by Cuban Heat not Storm down. It would appear that that window of opportunity that Storm made for himself has vanished now. We're back to that three-on-one situation. There is a uh, six-man tag at uh, Selston on, in, sorry, near Croydon on uh, Saturday night where all three members of the Cuban Heat entourage managed to uh, fall in defeat to Scott Starr and D&D, proving that... proving that when the numbers are even, Cuban Heat can be beaten. The advantage very much of Cuban Heat now. Charge into the corner, misses. Oh, beautiful springboard drop kick from Storm. And 
Zagiri. Storm now thinking up his next move. Up to the ropes he goes, a familiar place, but oh, Mark Lloyd, the banker, grabbing that foot. Oh, and down goes our referee, Tom Scarborough, taking a cross body block from Johnny Storm. Tom Scarborough is not a trained wrestler, and it looks like he's definitely been winded. Oh, Storm gets the briefcase. Storm gets waffled by the case by Mark Lloyd. And if Tom Scarborough turns round, he will see what's happened. The Cuban Heat wins in Here four minutes. Here is your winner, Cuban Heat. And that took just four minutes and 38 seconds. Yeah, he looks like a winner, doesn't he? Cuban Heat dragged away from the scene of the crime.